What would history be without a little bit of a story? I'm going to tell you the story of how the Boy Scouts came to the United States. There was this business guy named William D. Boyce who went to England on a business trip. And supposedly it was at night and he got lost in the London fog and he couldn't find his way. When out of nowhere came this young man dressed in uniform and asked William, like, hey, are you lost? Can I help you find where you're wanting to go? And William asked the boy for help. And the boy took him to the destination where William was going. In return, William reached in his pocket and was pulling out some money to give the boy a tip. And the boy said, no, 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 sir, I can't do that. And the guy's like confused. Well, why can't you take a tip? You help me. I want to show some appreciation. He says, no, sir, no, sir, I, I couldn't take it because I'm a scout. And this is my good turn. It impressed William so much that he found out where the headquarters of the Boy Scouts were. And he uh, visited and took the information back to the United States and with several other philanthropic people uh, started the Boy Scouts of America. Now, whether that story is true or not, 100%, uh, it's, it's hard to say. But that young scout was immortalized and in fact, when I worked for the Boy Scouts of America as a district executive, there's a statue uh, in honor of that scout right in front of national headquarters. So it still sticks around with us. It's an awesome story. And it drives the point home about doing the good turn. And uh, this kind of leads me into something that's slightly off of that. Today, we're going to be talking about... The compass. So stay with me. As always, I like to thank you guys for watching my videos. Uh, we're almost up to 400 subscribers. I really appreciate those of you who are sharing my videos, uh, watching them, liking them, especially commenting on them. I've noticed that I'm getting a lot more comments and I love responding to you guys. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Now, we're going to talk about the compass. We're going to talk about the history of the compass. And I'm also going to talk about how these styles of compass is used. But before we go into the nitty gritty of the artifact, I am going to talk a little bit about how much of a compass is involved in scouting. Now, if we go back to the original Boy Scouts handbook, if we go back to the history of Boy Scouting over in England, it was started by Lord Bain Powell, who was a military officer. And he came back and he saw these young men who were playing around and they're using his book which was designed for military uh, to teach scouting techniques. Now, Lord Baden-Powell was a fantastic artist and he was a really good cartographer, which means he used maps. He knew how to draw his own maps. So in the scouting book, he taught and instructed uh, people who read it how to make their own maps. So right off the bat, maps are really important. Now in the Boy Scouts, handbook it teaches the scouts how to use maps and now that we have our GPS's in our phones we have geocaching and things like that maps have kind of uh, been pushed back to the wayside a little bit especially as um, spaces get tighter and tighter as people move um, closer and closer and we have built up societies but even today orienteering is a merit badge and learning how to use a compass how to read a map is still in the rank system. Now, we even tie into the compass work a little bit more in the Boy Scouts of America. So if you always pay attention to my hat up here, I have the Florida de Lee. Now the Florida de Lee, this one particular, uh, represents the first class badge. And the Florida de Lee part of that badge is supposed to represent the north or the compass point, point north. That way, a scout always makes sure to follow north and they know that they need to always try to go the right way, the right direction and follow the right path. So there's a little bit of symbolism in there as well. Okay, so let's talk about 
the compasses that I have with me. The first compass that I have with me is just a, it's called a hunter's case, and it's a pocket compass, magnetic compass, and this particular one uses a card that spins. Now, this is called a C by, C by Night, and it was issued or it was offered in the Boy Scouting catalog as early as the 1920s and into the 1950s, 15s. Uh, this has been patented in 1915. It was used by soldiers in World War I. And in the Boy Scout catalog in 1920, it was very expensive. In fact, it was the most expensive compass that was offered, it's $3. Now, the average compass that was in that catalog costs you know, 75 cents or less. So $3 was a, a huge sum for a scout to uh, try to raise for a nice compass, but this one is really good. It's made by a tailor company, and it's called Sea by Night because they use radium, which is a glowing uh, radioactive element. In fact, if you ever watch Radium Girls, there probably were some girls who painted this and got very sick from it. But they used radium dot and a radium uh, north point. And this one also has the designated marks of 360 degrees, so you can uh, break down the direction that you need to go. Now, by 1927, this was no longer offered in the Boy Scouting catalog. They had cheaper models made by Taylor Company, but not the C by Night. Okay, so this one is, is kind of a not a, a super rare, but it's a it's a scarce compass that you would find. Like I said, it would have been very expensive. The second compass I have, which was given or offered in the 1930s, is another Taylor's compass, and it is unmarked, but Taylor Company had a really good relationship with the Boy Scouts of America, and they made this pocket compass. Now, this one uses a needle, and what's nice about this model is it does, when it closes, it stops the needle from moving, so it's not rattling around. So when you pop it open, it's in the exact same spot. Now, why do you do that? Well, if if you're moving it around and everything, that needle's constantly moving. When you pop open the case, it gives a faster reaction uh, for that needle, so long as you're going basically in the same direction. Now, if you turn around 180 degrees and then you open it up, the needle's going to spin rather quickly before it settles. But as long as you keep going in the same general direction, uh, it makes it a lot faster and easier to read. Now this does say Boy Scouts of America Headquarters, New York City. Now this one was also a more expensive model. Uh, this one costs $1.75, but they did have cheaper models, the same like this, except it just didn't have the, the Hunter's case to it. And this one's painted green. The other one is uh, nickel-plated brass. So let's go over and talk about how you would use these type of compasses. Stay with me. Okay, welcome back to Orienteering with Mr. Dyer, also known as Mr. Dyer's Musings Orienteering Class. So what we have here is a map that I draw, that I drew. Uh, I always tell my students that I'm not an artist, that's why I want to become a social studies teacher. But every map pretty much has the same characteristics and for the most part the same uh, similar monikers. So for example, starting from our left down here, this is called a scale. Now generally speaking it's usually one to two inches and it always, will always tell you what it designates. So for example, this is one inch equals one mile. So what we could do is we could take a uh, ruler and we can trot or plot our destination and see how far that uh, we're going to go. Also, over here, this is called the compass rose. So we have never eat soggy wheat or something very similar. Now, for the most part, most of your government maps, the north is always going to face uh, up or point up. Now, that can change on coastals a lot, oftentimes on coastal maps like since this is a rectangular sheet of paper, they'll have the coast on the long side and then uh, on the shorter side, that um, would be your your main body of land. Um, 
But for the most part, we're just going to go with that north points up, and so we know where we're going. Now you'll also see something like that. So whenever you see a line with hashes, generally speaking, that means that that's a uh, railroad. Uh, this is all one color, but usually if you get a colored map, you can tell when it's a body of water because it'll be blue. So what we have here is like a creek or a river. Then you have another body of water, and you have another body of water. Now this is very, very, very basic if you get a topographic map, which is what you'd want to have when you go out uh, hiking somewhere. Um, give you a lot more detail, and you can really pinpoint where you're at based off of the valleys and the hilltops and things like that, and elevation. But uh, for our sakes and purposes, since we're really just trying to figure out how to use this type of compass and this type of compass, this will do for us, okay? So whenever you're orienteering a map, uh, you'll see on this compass here, this is uh, the arrow that's going to be north on this type of compass, this needle has a little black dot on it. Uh, so that's going to designate north. That way you can tell well, which end of the needle is north and which is south. But you're going to orientate your map. You're not going to orientate your compass. You're going to orientate your map to suit the needs of your compass. So for that, we're going to take our compass like so. We want to find that is pointing north. May have to point a bit just a little bit more. Oh, wrong, wrong direction. Green it backwards. There we go. Okay. So we're going to orient our compass. Uh, same direction of the map. Now for this exercise, let's say we are here at this point. Uh, it's where the railroad and the body of water crosses. And we want to go to this body of water or we want to go to this road. If Based off of our compass, if we go north from here we're going to run into this body of water and then we're going to run into this road okay but to get to this body of water we're going to look at the degrees of this compass and it looks like we would want to go about 30 degrees in this direction. So it looks like we're going to have to go 30 degrees. So um, I'm facing this way right now. So what I would have to do is I'd actually have to physically turn my body again and I'd want to stand on this side of the compass and I would want to hike and follow that 30 degree mark that way. Um, or down, I guess, as the uh, <clears throat> camera is showing. Now if we take the card compass, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to let it settle. As it settles, we can take another bearing or heading and again if we're here and we're wanting to go to this body of water we're going to look at our compass here and it looks like on this mark it's going to be uh, 60 degrees so again I'm going to orient my body to be on this side of the compass and I'm going to hold it so that the uh, needle pretty much faces uh, to the left of me and I am going to follow the 60 degree mark. I want that 60 degree 
to be right in front of me as I walk forward. I'm not going to follow the north because I'm not wanting to go north. Instead, I'm wanting to actually go uh, northeast and just slightly shy at that. I want to go to that 60 degrees. Okay. Now that we know what direction that we want to go and we can keep walking that distance, we would want to look for um, landmarks. Now again, this map is not a topographical map. Okay, so now that we know that we want to go northeast, basically 60 degrees or 30 degrees, depending on which compass you're using, which, uh, by the way, I misspoke. That's 60 degrees. It was really, really small. My eyes have a hard time seeing. Um, but you would want to use a landmark of some sort. So uh, you don't know where the hills are, but if you're here and you start heading this direction to this body of water, if you're up on a hill, maybe you can see this body of water. Maybe you can't. So and that's the case, what you want to do is you want to stop every 25 paces or so and you want to take a new reading until you get all the way to where you want to go. Um, and what you can do is you can try to uh, find a particular tree or rock or something like that once you uh, cite your line of direction that you want to go and that will help you keep on a somewhat straight path. Now what that might look like is you might be zigzagging a little bit on your way and that's fine. So another thing to know is that you keep these maps that way you know basically where you're going. If you go from here and suddenly you find yourself hitting this road then <clears throat> this is a this is a barrier. You know that you're not going to cross any farther over, but again, you might not know, well, okay, what point on this road am I? Okay, so uh, having a triangulation, knowing where your different boundaries are, is going to help you stay where you're going. But that's uh, another point, is like you can try to find a point on this road if there's another road that goes closer than. Uh, you'll just follow the road up to you hit this point like okay now I'm here I'm gonna take out my compass and I know that I need to go south okay so you're gonna take your breeding and you're gonna go south if you go south that's gonna take you right there now it's always better to shoot for a larger target than something as precise so maybe instead of directly south you would want to go slightly southeast which again i'm having trouble reading this especially upside down i think that's 150 i think it's 150. so you would want to take your reading and maybe go 150 degrees to get you to your larger body of water and then you can just follow the coast knowing that that's going to get you where you want to go okay all right i hope that helps you with very very basic orienteering it's always good to know symbols like uh, symbols of a church symbols of a graveyard um, uh, railroads tunnels uh, waterways, rivers, generally speaking rivers are going to be thicker and creeks or uh, smaller bodies of water are going to be very narrow. Um, I hope that helps you. But going back to the focus of these these compasses, these are the style of compasses that were used by the Boy Scouts of America really up until the 1950s and 60s. Uh, and the lensatic compasses started coming into play and uh, you also had the um, base plate compasses that became 
really popular. And if I was going to teach scouts how to do orienteering, I would choose to do the base plate compass. There's a lot of tools on it that makes it a lot simpler, like uh, arrow in the doghouse, things like that. Whereas this one, um, it's not as forgiving when really trying to stay in one direction. But it is a pretty cool piece of gear. Uh, this is what was used up until that point. So if you know how to use a compass, and again, you check your paces and things, it'll get you where you need to go. It can do what it is that you really want it to do. Well, I hope that video was useful. I hope it was interesting and maybe you uh, explain a little bit on how to use these type of compasses. And again, that's just a very quick crash course. Uh, maybe I'll do a future video where I actually have a topographical map and show you how to use it. But um, for this compass, just knowing the basic directions, knowing the 360 degrees, which this one's so tiny so tiny it's really hard to hard to make it out but uh, just keeping pace with that checking yourself making sure you're using landmarks or tall trees rocks things like that to help you stay in a straight line uh, you shouldn't get lost and if nothing else always always have a map with you and use the roads or something that you know like hey i'm going to hit this road if i hit this road I can flag somebody down and I'm not going to get lost, okay? But you should always carry a map with you. You should always use a comp carry a compass and uh, certainly know how to use whatever compass it is that you take with you. We didn't go into declination. We didn't go into uh, some of the finer points like pace beads. Uh, but for just very basic how to read a map, how to orient yourself when you're starting someplace and you're going someplace, that's, that's what this was about, okay? Please like it if you do. Please share it. Uh, please make a comment if you got a funny orienteering story. I love to hear funny orienteering stories. Uh, share them below and uh, maybe we can get a conversation going. Uh, please hit subscribe if you're new to my channel. Check out my past videos. Got a lot of camp craft stuff, a lot of Civil War stuff. So uh, there's something on there that I'm sure that you'll like. And we just posted my video on the Great Circle Mound which is awesome. It's a longer video, but it's fascinating. It's just chock full of history. It's just two history nerds going at it together and uh, talking. So I think you'll like it if you got the time. Nothing else. Cut it up and watch it yourself that way. I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Give a kiss and hug to your loved ones and take care.